What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Big Blue in the Bronx YouTube channel video. Please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Also, share this out. We are going into training camp, which means there's a lot more competition among content creators compared to the dead time. And I've been sticking with you guys since the end of mini camps with these roster bowl videos, giving you information on these guys that you may not know about. Uh, so I would appreciate if you share this out, do all the good stuff. Uh, with that being said, I'm trying out a new microphone if you guys haven't seen already. And if this works well, if the audio is good, we're going to stream from training camp on July 30th, probably after the practice. It'll be me, Donald Stewart, Luca, and maybe our friend Matt Riley, who most people know from Twitter. Uh, we've hung out a few times at different events like NYY News TV and training camp, stuff like that. He's a cool guy. Um, but with that being said, I wasn't going to make a video based on the moves from earlier today, but... They started putting players on PUP, so we're going to talk about it. First, I want to go in chronological order, though, and talk about the signings and the waves. Um, the New York Giants waived four players, Henry Black, Maurice Kennedy, Jabari Ellis, and Travis Tavoinen. Tavoinen, he was going to be a camp body. I predicted him to miss the roster, uh, to get cut. He was in the Fan Control Football League. He was also a part of the Seahawks organization for a little bit. I made a roster bubble video on him, so if you want more information on him, you can go to that video, uh, even though I don't know if it's much use right now. Um, Jabari Ellis, I was going to make a roster bubble video on him. With that being said, no use now because he is now cut. Uh, more of a pass-rushing style defensive lineman rather than a run-stopping, but a drafted free agent at South Carolina. Hopefully he gets another job somewhere else. Henry Black, uh, he was supposed to be a guy that comes in, competes for the safety role, at least back up behind uh, Julian Love and Xavier McKinney, along with Dane Belton and all the other guys like Yusuf Corker, Trenton Thompson, was supposed to be one of the veterans back there. Uh, one of the guys the Giants signed is probably going to replace him in that role. But Henry Black moved all over the field last year for the Green Bay Packers on defense, only played about 20% of the defensive snaps, but uh, we'll see what happens to him. And Maurice Kennedy, who I predicted to make the roster, I believe he was actually one of my first um, roster bubble videos. I believe it was like two or three. I was Shane Zimenez was one. I wanted him to make the roster so bad because I feel like we didn't have enough depth back there in terms of veteran depth. You know, this guy has played a couple of years in the NFL compared to Jaron Williams and Radarius Williams and all these other guys. Uh, but he'll get a job. I'm not so concerned with him, you know, being a free agent forever. Uh, I wanted Kennedy to make the roster. I said he would make the roster. Obviously, that's not the case now. So I guess we're going to get some guys in and we'll see who makes the backup corner spots. In terms of signings, the New York Giants signed Andrew Adams. You guys know that name. If you don't know that name, New York Giants signed him as an undrafted free agent in 2016. So he's a Jerry Reese guy. Um, spent, the, you know, two years with the Giants. Got cut when James Betcher didn't want him. And they started Curtis Riley over him. So he went to the Tampa Bay Bucks for a few years. Then he went to Detroit. And I think he went back to the Bucks. So he's been all over the place. He has hauled in a couple of interceptions, though. But mainly role player, special teams piece. Uh, we'll see what happens. I never thought he was a bad role player. Let's say that. Uh, Marcus Kemp, mainly special teamer. And all these guys, by the way, are going to have their own roster mobile videos. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, Marcus Kemp, I, I called him Tony Kemp uh, in my notes. I'm like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. But anyway, Marcus Kemp, a uh, wide receiver with the Chiefs for a little bit. I think he was with another team as well, Miami, in 2019 or 2020. Um, but mainly a special teams piece has like four receptions in his career. So there's not much there. Probably going to vie for a backup spot in the roster. Kamal Seymour, undrafted free agent, I believe last year played a little bit with the Las Vegas Raiders. And then Nick Williams, veteran defensive lineman, has played in a couple of places. He had a six-sack season for Detroit in 2019. Actually, it was for the Bears, my mistake. But he spent the last two years with Detroit uh, before that Chicago, before that I think one other team and then Kansas City before that. And I believe he was drafted by the Steelers, but he was cut. So uh, hopefully I'm right on that. But he could come in and play a good role for the New York Giants. I know PFF didn't grade him well, but as a rotational piece, I wouldn't mind it. J Justin Ellis, Nick Williams, 
Um, so I would definitely feel more confident in him making the roster and making some impact rather than a guy like Jalen Holmes. Uh, let's get to the PUP and NFI because I feel like there's a lot more to this than people expect. Uh, in terms of the NFI, Aziz Ojolari s- sustained a hamstring injury when he was away with the Giants, I guess. So he's on the NFI list. I believe he could be activated anytime. Um, what does this mean exactly? I don't expect him to be out too long. With that being said, that uh, that edge rusher position, right? Quincy Roche, he may move up to the second team for right now. Uh, Ellison Smith, well, just, excuse me, I didn't mean second team. I, I know I've made, I've made a couple of blunders in this video, but Quincy Roche could move up to number two on the other side. Uh, Ellison Smith could be the one for the second team. Jihad Ward, Taman Fox. There's a couple of opportunities, and some of these guys like O'Shane Zimenez, Taman Fox, uh, Nico Lalos, those guys can vie even harder for a roster spot now with Aziz Ojolari out. Is he going to be out a long time? I don't think so, but we'll see how long it is. PUP, Sterling Shepard with the Achilles. Uh, Radarius Williams and Blake Martinez, who tore ACLs last year, were not put on PUP. So that's a very good sign heading into training camp that they will be in full action. Same thing with Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Tony, and some of the other cats. So what does that mean for Sterling Shepard? What does it mean for the wide receivers? Well, a guy like Richie James, could he come in uh, for the slot spot? A guy like Wandale Robinson, could he replace him in that slot spot for right now? Um, you know, Kadarius Tony, will he get more reps? Like, he didn't get the ball much in the first few weeks of the season last year. So maybe he makes up for that in training camp and even more of an impact this season. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, maybe a guy like Robert Foster kicks in. I don't know, but it's going to open up a lot of different opportunities for these wide receivers trying to vie for a spot. Uh, Nick Gates, who had the lower leg fracture, this is kind of expected. With the PUP, you can either transition into the season on the PUP list, or with that being said, you could be activated at any time. Kind of like the NFI, but PUP is a little bit more uh, serious. Nick Gates, obviously, the injury last year. So Max Garcia probably going to vie for a backup center spot. Same thing with Ben Bredesen. It's going to cause a lot of guys to try out at center. Back up a guy like Jonathan Feliciano. So we'll see what happens. Once again, opens a lot of different opportunities. Matt Parrott with the ACL injury. He tore it late last year. So this really isn't a surprise, at least to me. Um, tore it in that Eagles game. So a guy like Matt Gano. Devery Hamilton, um, I don't think we signed any other tackle since then, so Roy from Nigeria, he could get a spot, it's going to be interesting, it's going to be really interesting, and I don't necessarily, you know, j- jump for joy when it comes to injuries, but we're going to see an interesting training camp where these guys are going to vie for spots while some of these other cats and the veterans are on the PUP and a file list, um, but that's all I have for this video. Expect a roster bubble video out sometime soon today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or you drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Uh, we'll be doing the Mets game against the Yankees tomorrow on this channel. Roster bubble videos are going to finish up probably this week leading into next. A lot of stuff on this channel. I would like to thank some of you guys, new subscribers that came in on Boys and Big Apple yesterday. We had a fun time. Talked for an hour about the whole Somerset uh, friggin' adventure. And then we went on to different sports. But it was a real fun time. We had some really good numbers. But with that being said, I'll end it here. Peace out, guys. See you later. Stay cool.